whether someone told you how good praying with the Bible can be, or if it just seems like something you probably should be doing, we all probably have come to the point where we ask, how do we do it? In this video, let's know his love in the Bible. Praying with the Bible should be easy, but then we start to read about Elisha sending bears after some kids because they made fun of his baldness, or about the incredibly detailed ways of preparing food or offering sacrifices, and we can begin to wonder, am I doing this right? One of the reasons that I know I struggled with praying with scripture is that when I was younger, I really had no direction on how to do it. I thought that I simply had to flip to a random page in the Bible and read a few paragraphs and that that was the extent of praying. This method was ultimately boring, unsatisfying, but at the same time I knew that the Bible was important. I, I would hear it read during the Mass, we would study it in school, but I didn't really have a way of knowing how to actually pray with it. While there are many different methods or ways of entering into prayer with Scripture, the one that I found most meaningful to me is Lexio Divina. One of the people that is a big advocate for Lexio Divina and inspired me to pray with scripture in this way uh, was Pope Benedict XVI. This is a man who knows scripture. It seems that his entire priesthood was focused in a special way on scripture. Almost immediately after the Second Vatican Council, he contributed to a highly influential commentary on Dei Verbum, the Church's constitution on divine revelation. Time and time again, he would stand against biblical interpretive models that would ultimately reduce the scriptures to a dead letter. Even during his pontificate, Benedict would not just speak about the importance of having a rich intellectual knowledge and study of the scriptures, he would also emphasize the need for Christians to be able to pray with the Bible. In an address commemorating the 40th anniversary of Dei Verbum, Benedict tells us, I would like in particular to recall and recommend the ancient tradition of Lexio Divina, the diligent reading of sacred scripture accompanied by prayer brings about that intimate dialogue in which the person reading hears God who is speaking and in praying, responds to him with trusting openness of heart. If it is effectively promoted, this practice will bring to the church, I am convinced of it, a new spiritual springtime. I don't know about you, but I would gladly welcome a new spiritual springtime in my own life in the church. And for this springtime to come about, Benedict tells us that he is convinced that it can happen by promoting Lectio Divina. So what is Lexio Divina, and why can it be so important in bringing about spiritual renewal in the church? In an address to youth of the world in 2006, Benedict tells us, I urge you to become familiar with the Bible and to have it at hand so that it can be your compass pointing out the road to follow. By reading it, you will learn to know Christ. Note what St. Jerome said in, in this regard. Ignorance of the scriptures is ignorance of Christ. A time-honored way to study and, uh, and savor the word of God is Lexi Divina, which constitutes a real and veritable spiritual journey marked out in stages. As St. Jerome tells us, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. It is so important that we become deeply familiar with scripture it isn't enough, though, to simply have verses memorized or an encyclopedic knowledge of every biblical character. Keep in mind that when Satan was tempting Jesus in the desert, he quoted scripture. He knows scripture. But in order to rid ourselves of ignorance of scripture, it's more than just having information stored away. Our familiarity of, with the Bible, as Benedict tells us, is coming to know Christ. We can know Christ, not just information about him, but really know him. We can know his love and love him. We can enter into that journey with him through Lectio Divina. 
Benedict tells us elsewhere that Lexio Divina, which is truly capable of opening up the faithful to the faithful the treasures of God's word, but also of bringing about an encounter with Christ, the living word of God. Praying with scripture can give us those encounters with Christ, not in some sort of purely imaginative way that relies on our own power, but a real encounter with the living word of God who loves you, who died for you, and who wants to be in your life. We can encounter God when we pray with scripture. Dei Verbum tells us in the sacred books, the father who is in heaven comes lovingly to meet his children and talks with them. Lexu Divina, it's not something new. It's not a new fad. It can go all the way back to the early centuries of the church, and we can find Christians praying in this way. In his letter to Gregory, Origen writes, While you attend to this Lexio Divina, Seek a right with unwavering faith in God, the hidden sense which is present in most passages of the divine scriptures. And do not be content with knocking and seeking, for what is absolutely necessary for understanding divine things is a ratio. And in urging us to this, the Savior says, not only knock and it will be open to you, and seek and you will find, but also ask and it will be given to you. The 4th century bishop of Milan, St. Ambrose, learned from Origen's works how to interpret the scriptures. Ambrose's reading of scripture was alive. It was grounded in reality, and he tells us about it. He says, We have been given sacred scripture so that God and man may talk together, for we speak to him when we pray. We hear him when we read the divine saying." This isn't some kind of wishful thinking. Praying with scripture gives us an opportunity to truly walk with God, to speak to him, to hear him. Benedict reflects, Thus Ambrose transferred to the Latin environment the meditation on the scriptures which Origen had begun, introducing in the West the practice of Lectio Divina. The method of Lexio served to guide all of Ambrose's preaching and writings, which stemmed precisely from prayerful listening to the word of God. Ambrose, Ambrose would, in, his work in scripture would be influential to St. Augustine and would eventually spread and keep going through the centuries. And in the 6th century, it would be taken up by St. Benedict and the monastic communities that would eventually bear his own name. So how do we pray with Lexio Divina? There are different approaches to Lexio, and I know that the Halo app offers one version. Focus missionaries can use the acronyms of RAP or ARRR uh, of Lexio. And honestly, it's best to find what works for you and what helps you pray. As someone who is deeply influenced by Benedict XVI, I tend to use what he promoted. So that's what I wanted to share today. Before you begin, it's good to find a passage that you plan to pray with. I find it helpful, especially when just starting with praying with Lexi Divina, to start with the book of Psalms or even passages from the Gospels. Um, it could be the daily readings or sometimes the Sunday readings. You just want to make sure that the reading isn't too long, um, maybe just a few short paragraphs at most. For this video, we can focus on Psalm 23. Once you have your passage selected, I find it helpful to begin praying with Scripture by inviting the Holy Spirit to be present and to aid you in your prayer. As the Catechism tells us, If the Scriptures are not to remain a dead letter, Christ, the eternal Word of the living God, must, through the Holy Spirit, open our minds to understand the Scriptures. After we open in prayer, we can begin going through the five stages, some versions of Lexia 4, the stages of Lexio Divina. The first in Latin is Lexio, the second Meditatio, the third Oratio, the fourth Contemplatio, and the fifth is Oxio. Lexio, Meditatio, Oratio, Contemplatio, and Axio. Lexio, or reading, is just that. We slowly and deliberately read through the passage. We don't need to be in any kind of rush with this. Read through the passage slowly, deliberately. You can even read it out loud if you like. As you read through the passage, maybe words or phrases might seem to stand out to you. 
They seem a little bit weightier. They seem to, sometimes I've heard it called, they seem pregnant. They seem to have something within them. If those words stick out to you, underline them. If those phrases stick out to you, underline them, highlight them. After you finish reading the passage, just simply pause for a few minutes, at least 15 to 30 seconds, although it can be longer, and then reread the passage. Again, if words stick out to you, underline them, highlight them. For example, if we were reading the first few lines of Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. If we're reading that during the Lexio stage, maybe the phrase, I shall not want, or he leads me, or still water stands out. You underline those words or phrases, and then you can repeat this Lexio stage several times. Again, read it slowly, deliberately, maybe three times at least, four times, and then pause in between each reading. After you move from the Lexio stage, next we move to Meditatio. And during this time, we spend time meditating on what we read, what stood out to us. Pope Benedict describes the stage as a moment of interior reflection, which the soul turns to God and tries to understand what his word is saying to us today. We can take those words or phrases that stood out to us and begin to meditate on how they apply to us right now in our lives. We can ask, is there anything that I think I want that isn't of God? Do I find myself hungering after things that will ultimately leave me dissatisfied? Am I letting the Lord lead me? Do I allow myself to be still in his presence or am I anxious about many things of the world? This stage is an opportunity to reflect on how these words or the entire passage is speaking to my life right now. During this stage, we aren't really analyzing the passage, but instead we're opening ourselves to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Spend as much time as you need on this stage, but at least try to give it five to ten minutes. At least when someone is starting out in Lexio, it can be tempting to rush through each step. And again, there's no need to rush. As we move from the Lexio to the Meditatio, now we move to the third stage, Oratio, or prayer. And in this, we're simply offering back to God the gift that he first gave us. In the Lexio stage, we were given the gift of words or phrases or even the entire passage that we prayed with. Now we turn those words or phrases into a prayer. We take the gift of those words and phrases together with our meditation and we turn them into a prayer and offer them back to God. Speak them to God and let this prayer come from the heart. If the phrase, he restores my soul in Psalm 23 stood out to you and in your meditation you realize that maybe you're in need of restoring, let the Lord know that. Speak to him. Ask him for it. He's listening. And as our prayer to the Lord is spoken, now we let those words melt away as we enter contemplatio, the fourth stage, or contemplation. The Catechism describes contemplation as silent love. Words in this kind of prayer are not speeches, they are, not, they, or they are kindling that feeds the fire of love. In this silence unbearable to the outer man, the Father speaks to us his incarnate word, who suffered, died, and rose. In this silence, the spirit of adoption enables us to share in the prayer of Jesus. As I said, at this stage, the words from the previous stages of Lexio can just melt away as we simply fix our gaze on the one who is lovingly looking at us. This is a time to rest in his presence. It is a communion of love where we, we become grounded in love and thus grounded in reality. Pope Benedict tells us, contemplation aims at creating within us a truly wise and discerning vision of reality as God sees it and is forming within us the mind of Christ. Let yourself stay at this stage for as long as you can. can. The more you practice praying with scripture, the longer this stage can last. Finally, after emerging from the depths of contemplation, Benedict recommends a fifth stage, axio or action. He tells us, we do well to remember that the process of Lexio Divina is not concluded until it arrives at action, axio, which moves the believer to make his or her life a gift of others in charity. 
In other words, the fruit of our prayer isn't meant to stay caged within us, but it's meant to be shared with the world. Remember, Benedict is convinced that promoting the practice of Lexio Divina will bring a new spiritual springtime to the church. And if the church experiences a spiritual springtime, the world will surely know about it. Hopefully, this brief introduction to Lexio Divina was somewhat helpful. If you check on the resources page on knowhis.love, you can find a little bookmark outlining the stages of Lexio Divina. You can print it out, make it smaller, and easily keep this in your Bible as you go through this process. If you have any questions at all about Lexio Divina, feel free to send us a message on social media or through the Join Us page at knowhis.love. <laughs>